I'm not quite sure yet how I want to go about building my rear fenders. So I think in the meantime, I'm going to build a fuel tank. Time to go shopping. Hey, how's the jokes and welcome back to my dusty shop out here in a forest in South Africa. If you don't know me yet, my name is Duff. Um, quite a few guys have asked how you spell it. Well, it doesn't actually matter because it's a nickname. Uh, we spell it D-I-V, but we say it D-I-F-F. -F. <laughs> so you can spell it either way, as long as you don't say Duff. D-U-F-F -F. Because that word has got a meaning that I hope does not apply to me <laughs> That's what goes on at my forest shop when I go to town My nephews take over I went looking for something to make a fuel tank from and this is all the junk that followed me home. Got a nice little compressor tank here. It's still in good nick actually. I found these two refrigerant bottles. They are virtually brand new. A nice road sign that I can stick on my wall. I like those and I always pick them up if I find them. And I'm always a sucker for a steel toolbox. I hate the plastic ones. This one is actually not bad, it's got very little rust, it's just a little bit dirty, but we can sort that out. Um, everything works, it's got a nice little tray inside. So yeah, total price for all this, 150 rands, which is the equivalent to about $8 US. So I want to cut open this bottle, but before I do that, let's just see what we're dealing with here. I see here it's written non-flammable liquefied gas. That's a good starting point. <laughs> it's got instructions for disposable. Let's see, do not vent residual pressure to atmosphere. Well, I mean, I double checked and made sure that the valves were open. When I picked them up in the junkyard, so we're not going to worry about that point. <laughs> what else? When empty, open valve, puncture container and discard. So they actually recommend puncturing it. So if I just drill a hole in it, for a start will be good. There's no issue there. What else? Do not incinerate, do not flame cut or weld empty container. Do not reuse. Oh dear, I think uh, we will just disregard those last two instructions. <laughs> this valve has been open since yesterday, so we definitely don't have any residual pressure in this bottle. 
So as per official instructions, I'm going to puncture it by drilling a hole here. Alright, so far so good. Nothing came out. <laughs> okay, so they did say non-flammable gas, right? Let's cut this thing with the grinder and see what happens. I'm still here. <laughs> it looks good inside. Absolutely spotless inside. Let's see what the wall thickness of this uh, steel is here. What is that? The one and a half millimeters. That's roughly one sixteenth of an inch. When it comes to those thousands of an inch or decimal inches, I fall off the bus. I have no idea. That's a nice wall thickness for making a fuel tank with, so I'm really happy with that. Down there you can see the outlet valve. I don't think I can reuse that, so I'll just cut it off from the outside, I think. No, this outlet is too small. I'm going to cut it right there. Yeah, look, that's a nice solid bit of steel there, so I can weld something on or I can drill and tap something there, so that'll work well. Oh, look, yeah, it says please recycle. Well, we're going to do better than that. We're going to be upcycling it. <laughs> I've got two ideas for the location of the fuel tank. Uh, this is the first option. I've just mocked up these two bottle ends right here in this location. The plan would be to roll a piece of sheet metal and connect it to make a long narrow cylindrical tank now uh, i don't plan to have a tailgate or cover any of this so this will all be visible and i do like the fact that this one matches the air tank up there the downfall of this particular tank is that the volume is not that much when i did the calculations i get about 40 liters maybe uh, 41 liters and um, that's not very big. <laughs> uh, for my American buddies, that would be roughly, I don't know, a little bit more than 10 gallons, 11, maybe 12 gallons. So that's the first option. And then my other idea is to do two vertical tanks like what I've got mocked up here. Um, it does actually fill in these spaces on either side of the, those lever arms for the front suspension. Yeah, it falls in these spaces quite nicely. The advantage of this option is that I'll get more capacity. The way they sit now, I will have about 30 liters in each tank for a total of 60 liters. The option I had around there, I only had about 40 liters. Um, 60 liters is uh, close to 16 gallons. So that's a whole lot better. And then, yeah, ignore the color, eh? we can change that. So don't let the color throw you. Definitely won't stay this color. So with this option, if I want to increase capacity, I would have to go for a bigger diameter. So I can't use those pieces anymore. But if I increase diameter here, my watch link and all my trickery, <laughs> it's not going to be visible from the back anymore. And I want to, to be able to see that. I want to leave all of this open, I'm not going to have a tailgate, I'm not going to have a load bin. This truck is not going to be a truck anymore, it's days of hauling cargo, it's definitely over. <laughs> so this option, or this option, I need to make a choice. I am pondering matters of grave concern here in my thinking chair. But I must say, I'm actually liking this idea, this version, this option. It kind of fills in that space for me. There's a bit of a flow to it here. Remember, the color will be changing, so it's not going to stand out like that. And the fact that I've got more capacity here, I like that too. I can do a filler cap right on top, one on each side. And I actually just feel that having the two tanks here does add a lot of interest. 
So I'm actually starting to convince myself that I want to do this. It's a nice color, but I'm taking it off. R507 refrigerant. I've got no idea what this stuff is used for. Aircons? Fridges? I don't know. What I do know is that I'm refrigerated, man. I mean, we are having the coldest winter here in the 20 years that I've been living here. But then I also hear that there's all these heat waves in, uh, in the States and in parts of Europe. So yeah, different uh, sides of the spectrum, opposite ends of the globe. So I reckon some of you guys can probably do with a little bit of refrigeration. <laughs> I'm just drilling out these spot welds here on the inside. So I can take this thing off. I don't need it. Then I can just clean up the rest of it here. Oh, of course, and when it's cleaned up, I'll just weld up these holes again. I got my holes plugged up, and while I was at it, I welded on this quarter inch pipe nipple here. So now I can screw in, or screw on rather, this little ball valve. This is the outlet, bottom side of the tank. So now I can shut it off if I want to. Yeah, and down the line we will pressure test the tank and make sure that all these welds are good and that we don't have any pinholes. <laughs> right, so I've just mocked it up again because I need to make a final call on my tank length, which will obviously affect tank volume. Um, down here I need to clear the link bars for my rear suspension. And yeah, I need to have clearance as well for the swing arms on the airbags when they come out. So I'm just going to air up the truck to see that we don't catch here. Cool, we've got clearance here. And we've got clearance here. Um, in the back I'm fully slammed so this can't move up any further so I think this is where the bank needs to sit on the bottom side of things and as far as the stop section is concerned I think it would be a good call to have this in the same line as the bottom of the window just visually looks good yes and now that the strong blue color is gone it does not look so it doesn't pop out so much anymore <laughs> I still need to make a call and I'm gonna finish this I don't know, we can have it painted a color of sorts, or we can rust it, or we can do fake patina. No, we need to make a decision on that one. Let me know what you think. So I think, yeah, this is pretty much my tank size. So I'm going to measure this distance between here and here. And then I can do a final calculation to know what my volume is going to be. I'm going to be using the metric system for doing my volume calculations, hey? So if you're watching from the States, maybe it's a good time to pick up on the metric system because it does actually work very well. So the distance here between my two ends is 300 millimeters or 0.3 of a meter. This distance here, let's call it 130 millimeters, 0.13 of a meter. I'm going to ignore the slightly dished end and regard it as a flat surface. It will add a slight bit of volume, but it's not going to make much of a difference. And the diameter of my tank will be 240 millimeters or 0.24 of a meter. So the total length of my tank is 130 plus 300 plus 130 equals 560 millimeters which is the same as 0 0.56 meters. Next we need to know the cross-sectional area of my container which of course in my case is a circle. So the formula for the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. So pi is roughly 3.14 my radius is 240, half of that is 120, expressed in meters is 0 0.12. So 
So we need to calculate this answer. And my clever phone says 0 0.0452 blah blah blah. And then finally the volume will then be the length multiplied with the area. My length is 0 0.56. I've calculated my area. So I get an answer of 0 0.253 cubic meters. There's a thousand liters in a cubic meter. So I just jump my decimal two spaces and my volume of this tank is 25.3 liters. I've got two tanks. A total will be a little bit more than 50 liters. So my total capacity with the two tanks will then be 50 liters, which is around 13 US gallons. If I remember correctly, there's about 3.8 liters to a gallon. Well, it's not massive. I can increase my volume by making my tanks longer, but I think this is good enough for me. So I'm going to live with that. Okay, so this needs to be 300 millimeters plus a little bit for an overlap. 300 moles is about uh, one foot. That would be a frozen foot out here in this workshop. And then I also need to measure the circumference. And then I can go cut out that piece of sheet metal that I need to connect these two end pieces together. And I would need to roll it as well. So this type of uh, flexible tape measure works really well to measure something like this. Not sure what you call them. Is it a seamstress tape? I stole this one from my wife's sewing room. <laughs> she doesn't even know. I mean, she's got quite a few of them, so she never missed it. Don't tell her though. <laughs> Work all right, what have we got? 87 centimeters, 870 millimeters. Uh, ay, ay, ay. I tell you, man, one day when I'm all grown up, I want a big table so that I don't have to crawl around on the floor like a bug. Let's get the little slip roller out. I bought this thing many years ago and it's been serving me very well. And let's get this piece of metal going through here. Let me try it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. All right, let's go. Equal turns on each side, otherwise we roll a cone-shaped thing. I don't want that. Almost. Let's try one more. Okay, that's over rolling it, but it doesn't really matter. It's actually better that way. Let's go see how it works. Right, let's see. Yeah, that's not too bad. 
I have a tiny little overlap here, but I will cut that when I start attacking it on. Yeah. So I'm just pondering this a little bit and I'm thinking I should maybe weld in my filler cap before I assemble the whole tank. It will just be easier. The side's going to be the top with these three pimples. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So I've got a real forest engineering plan for a filler cap. <laughs> I'm going to weld on this piece of um, one and a half inch pipe nipple. So I would need a hole here. And I'm just going to use one of these pipe caps. And that will be my filler cap. Why not? I'm going to cut my hole with the plasma cutter. So I just want to see which one of my little ring guides, hole guides, what do we call them, will work. That one's too big. This one is perfect. Now these things work really well for guiding your plasma cutter. And they are so easy to make, just a bit of pipe with a handle welded on. I'll show you now how, it, how well it works. Easy to make and you can have a whole range. I've got a whole collection of them already. So I'm just going to center it here by eye and then try and hold it real steady. Normally I clamp them on when I cut on a plate. It's a bit tricky to clamp on this thing. So um, somewhere there, let's give it a go. There you go. Simple as that. So not quite stacked times, I know, but it'll do. Besides, I'm not claiming to be a TIG welder, but the old man's got to get his practice in somehow. I've allowed for a 10 millimeter or 3 eighths of an inch overlap here. So I've set my marking gauge to 10 millimeters. And I'm just going to scribe a line here now that I can work to. It will give me a reference. Okay, so let's see if we can assemble this thing. I'm going to stick this end cap in here. And then I can line it up with my scribe mark. Something like that. So I think I'm just going to give it a light tack there and then I'm going to work my way all the way around. that it was trying to fight me so I got this big ass old clamp to show it who's the boss <laughs> it's together so now I can weld it up um, I was going to cut and butt this overlap here and then I thought why bother this way it's just quicker and easier I can just stick this seam towards the back of the cab and you won't see it anyway, so I'm just going to leave it as it is.
Okay, like a man, so I've got both tanks fully welded. And now I've got to start thinking about mounting them to the truck. So my first idea was to cut a bracket like this. Weld it on here and then we can bolt it to the truck. But then I started thinking, you know what, this material is very thin. Um, it's 1.2 millimeters, which I think is 18 gauge. So welding that on there, I'm thinking it might develop some stress cracks down the line. So I don't like that idea anymore. So I've got to come up with something else. So I'm going to roll this piece of uh, three mil flat bar, one eighth of an inch, to make a strap. So my strap will then go on like this. I can weld two ears here with a hole through them so I can tighten it up. Something like that. I'll have to do another one there. And then I can weld my bracket onto the strap somewhere. And then this can then bolt to another bracket that's mounted to the truck. Yeah, I think this is a better solution. It's much more work, but it will work well. I can also line this with a bit of rubber on the inside. Yes. So this OG is very good at dreaming up work for himself. OG as in old guy, old geezer, old goat. <laughs> so the plan is now to have two of these straps or hoops per tank. So it will go on like this. And then I want to uh, weld on this bracket here. And then it's Mate will weld onto a frame on the truck itself and then we can bolt it on like that. Let's see how that works out. A bracket. I mean, it's such a useful word. <laughs> but it's also, as I say, useless word. I mean, what does it actually mean? I call these brackets and I also call that a bracket. And I call that a bracket. There's another bracket. And down here is also a bracket. Brackets, brackets, brackets everywhere. Is this fabrication or is this just bracket making? Okay, like a man, so I got my four straps made. What I suppose we should call them clamps now. Can you hear those birds in the background? I'm not sure. We call them hardy dust and they make a hell of a racket. So my clamp will go on like this. And put a bolt through there and tighten it up. And then obviously I can position them where I want. So I've lined the inside of these brackets with strips of this rubber sheet. It's so what, maybe a millimeter and a half, two millimeters thick. Just to prevent chafe and uh, give it some grip, I suppose. <laughs> and I want to paint the tank, so it will protect the paint a little bit as well. So now, let's go and see how we're going to mount these brackets to the truck. So I'm just going to stick in these two cross members to provide an attachment point for those tanks. This is a 50 by 50 square tubing, 2 by 2 box section, um, same as this. I still need to cut this off and cap the end. 
but yes I think uh, I'm just going to weld this in and then we can take it from there Okay, lock them in. I've got them both into place. Kind of looks to me like the one is sitting a little bit higher than the other, but that's easily adjustable. I just undo these bolts a little bit. I can move this tank up and down. Um, this area, yeah, I think it just begs for something decorative. I have to see what I can do there. And good old hindsight, eh? I'm now sorry I didn't fit two inch pipe nipples here with bigger caps. But yeah, it is what it is. This will still work. So everything is just tack welded together. And I still have to finish these ends. But this whole cross member, if we want to call it that, can be unbolted. So later on when I take everything apart again, I'll take this and go weld it up on the bench. It's just so much easier. Why should I struggle in here? This nut here is going to be a real beach to get to when the side panels are on. So I've just written a reminder for myself to weld the nuts onto the bottom of this plate when I take this thing out. Okay, well I've still got to pressure test these tanks. I mean it will be a freaking miracle if there's not a single pinhole in these weld seams. And i got to think about breathing and a method to know how much fuel I've got in there and stuff like that. So let me get them out so we can start paying some attention to that. I screwed on this quick connect here by my uh, tank outlet and I've got this ball valve as well so I can now connect my shop air here yeah? and open the valve and then I will pressurize the tank so I am expecting it to leak here yeah, by my filler cap and it's leaking like mad okay I'll just put on a little bit of thread tape here yeah, so that it doesn't leak so badly just for the test. <laughs> that should do it. Get this cap back on. And let's pressurize it again. Get some soapy water onto those weld seams. Okay, let's see on this weld seam with my soapy water. That looks good. I don't see any bubbles. 
turn us back. Hey, so far so good, eh? Yeah, I think this one's good. I don't see any bubbles. Let's try this one. I see nothing. I'm impressed with myself. One more to do. Final well team. Let's see if my luck holds. Holy cow, I can't believe it. I can't find a single pinhole on all these welds. I must keep be getting better at this TIG welding business. <laughs> well, I can show you one leak here by my filler cap. So I didn't tighten it enough. Or well, probably needs more thread tape. But the leak here doesn't bother me at all. It might actually be adequate for the breathing of the tank. I don't know. <laughs> so apart from that leak by the filler cap, this tank is holding pressure very nicely. I can't find any panels. <laughs> so I wasn't that lucky with the second tank. I found three panels that I marked. I've already grinded them out a little bit. So I'm going to weld them up and then test it again. And I'm almost willing to bet my hat that these leaks are where I um, used the MIG welder to do the attacks initially. So with my pressure test successfully completed, I started thinking about a fuel gauge. Now yeah, a standard automotive type gauge is not going to work very well here. Yeah? I mean that float inside this tall vertical tank <laughs> ain't going to do it. So the simplest thing would be to just have a dipstick and then dip it. But I decided to do a side glass instead. I've already welded in these pipe bends. I scavenged those pipe bends from this thing. I think it was a motorcycle carrier rack or something like that. Found it here amongst my junk. Uh, the OD of this tubing it's a little bit more than half an inch, 13, 14 millimeters, perfect for my application. So this is just a piece of uh, transparent plastic tubing. This is an old piece I've had here for a while, so I'll get a nice new fresh one. I've done this successfully in the past. See this one on this tank? It's been on here for many years. There you can see the fuel level. It's a plastic transparent tubing. Yeah, and it's been working very well. I guess if you are concerned about it getting damaged, you can always cover it with a mesh or something like that to give it some protection. Um, I will obviously be fitting double hose clamps on each side to make sure it doesn't come off. Oh, and yes, by the way, I did pressure test it again to double check my welds here. And for those guys who was worried about this uh, piece of plastic pipe that might get damaged. This time around I've made a guard that can fit across here from some expanded mesh. So we'll fit that like this down the line. That'll protect it very well but you'll still be able to see the float level. And now I still have to think about a breather and I think I'm just going to do that motorbike style and drill a hole in my cap. Just a tiny little hole. Real bush mechanic style. <laughs> so to add a little bit of style, <laughs> I took a brass bolt, M6 quarter inch, and I drilled a tiny hole in it. I think this is about two millimeters. I have no idea what that is in inches. And um, drilled and tapped the top of the cap to take my bolt. So if you really don't like this, I can always take the bolt out down the line and come up with another plan. But I think that's good enough for me for now. Right, so my two tanks are installed. And now this thing makes me think of a rocket ship. <laughs> so if memory serves, the propellants they use um, are liquid uh, oxygen locks. 
and something like kerosene or liquid hydrogen. So maybe I should label the tanks accordingly for a bit of fun. <laughs> now by the way, this section here will still get covered in with some steel, so you won't be able to see the bottom part of the tank or any of the four links here. My sight glass guard, now there's a word, eh? <laughs> we'll go over like this. Now my piece of plastic pipe is protected and I feel we've added quite a lot of interest to this whole contraption here. <laughs> um, I suppose a side glass setup like this, side glass for the lack of a better word, it's probably illegal in some circles, but uh, luckily I live in darkest Africa, so that's not my concern. I'm going to join these two outlets with a T and then just run a single line to the engine. So because my outlets are at the very bottom of the tank, there isn't that uh, space inside the tank for, you know, sediment collection. Like when you have a pickup tube. So because of that I'm going to have to fit some really good fuel filters. And yes, I've also then got uh, shuttle valves at the bottom of each tank. So I can shut down each tank if I want. Shut down, shut off. <laughs> so I did consider having only one filler cap. But that would mean that I need a cross connection pipe of quite a large diameter. So that the fuel can flow fast enough from one tank to the other. And also large breathing pipes. <clears throat> and yeah, I decided that this becomes too complex. So the way I've got it now, the pipe connecting the two tanks together at the bottom to T it will only be maybe about 3 8 or something like that. And I will just fill each tank individually. Because that tiny little pipe definitely won't make the flow of fuel from one tank to the other fast enough. Uh, I might just end up playing with my shuttle valves in the bottom. And shut it, one tank off and fill it and let's do the same for the other one. We'll see how it works out. I might come and bite me in the ass down the line and I might get tired of a setup. Let's find out. Okay, lucky like man. So we are tanked up. And all is good. Thanks for hanging out with me out here in the forest. I enjoyed your company. I'll see you in the next video when we tackle those fenders. That's going to be a big step. Until then, have a lucky one. So I now know to get. So I now know to. So I now know. <laughs>